in this um, course, that'll kind of be the culmination of the course is applying these uh, principles and this approach of this preference-based approach uh, of looking at human action and um, and using that to logically um, come up with price theory uh, and um, and how market prices can form. And Mises has this great quote where he talks about um, that price theory that um, that the formation of prices, that the price system isn't fundamentally about distributing um, goods in a certain way, a, a given set of goods in a, in, a, in a given sort of way, that ultimately that it's about guiding production. Um, and, and so then later when you talk about sort of the profit and loss and, and, and you bring prices into uh, exploring a market economy, and then you can, then you can really see um, sort of how everybody ends up better off with, with this system. Um, and, and so that, that will be what's really exciting about the second course. And so in the first course, um, you well, like you said, that that you you automatically see just the mutual advent uh, advantages of a free exchange, and so that in and of itself is really inspiring in terms of of capitalism and, and, and private property. But but what's really fascinating to me about this f first course is is just the logic of it. it is just taking um, uh, you know rational young people. Uh, th through the logic of thinking about action and, and preferences and and actually coming up with a, a pretty like a very non-obvious price theory that that it, it is based on you know kind of tautologically like you said just like the Pythagorean theorem is based on on these very basic axioms but it's not obvious and and so it's just really uh, it um, I have a daughter, and and I just can't wait until she grows up and gets old enough to to be able to to walk through the the logic of this, where you're you're having the rigorous logical thinking um, that you apply in geometry, but but it's applied to people, to to people, to living people, um, and that's what's really exciting about this course. Well, yeah, I appreciate those kind words, and and I agree with you that the subject matter is kind of amazing. Because you're right, if you just grabbed a seventh grader without being exposed to economics and said, "Okay, we, if we had a bunch of kids and they had various combinations of candy bars, and they started trading," you know, explain to me how how would the the ratios work? Like, well, why would you know one Snicker trade for three? And they, and they probably would say something. Well, because you know, they, I guess people like Snickers more. Yeah. And you say okay, but and you'd, you'd walk through all sorts of problems with that. That would then, if they like Snickers more, why would the person with Snickers ever trade away Snickers if he likes Snickers more? And go, oh well, what I meant was they, you know, and and they would and so you'd be backing them into a court, and they would realize they weren't sure, and 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 then so what we're doing here is, yeah, if someone takes this course, they will be in a much better position and understand crystal clear how it is that people enter a market with what they come to market with, see the opportunities available, and then exchange buy and sell and that we'd understand the the principles governing that sort of interaction and that's where market prices come from. And then like you say in later courses we'll see just how important it is for there to be market prices, but what we're doing in this first one is just establishing from the logic of action this is where market prices come from. We can explain market prices and you don't need anything else. We can give it to you all in this course just you got to walk through with me through these arguments and you'll you'll grasp it yourself because it's just I'm asking you just to think it through. Thank you. That's great. Um, so the Mises Academy is an is an online course, I mean an online program. And um, now there are lots of online programs that are making big news. Uh, there's the Khan Academy, uh, which started out as mostly uh, math videos um, by Salman Khan and um, that has uh, that has revolutionized a lot of of um, homeschooling programs and and um, math classes uh, throughout the country. Um, there's there are what's called MOOCs, uh, massively open online courses. Um, so these organizations like 
Coursera and uh, Udacity and edX uh, where um, there are like like it says massively open where, where um, it's um, free and people from all around the world can come in and so they'll have these courses with these huge enrollments of like just like a thousand people or something like that and um, and so it's it's really exciting to a lot of people especially with just with the failures of of um, k-12 public education uh, in, in this country and um, you know skyrocketing education higher education costs um, what what do you see in the in the future of, of education especially with regard to online education well I'm really excited about it uh, I spent three years teaching in a regular college environment and when I was there I mean I walked away thinking there's there's twice as many people going to college that should be in other words in my class and I was even at a pretty you know selective liberal arts school and it, and I just thought kind of thought half the people shouldn't be here and when, and sometimes when people hear that there's oh what are you saying they're stupid and no that's not what I'm saying at all I'm just saying uh, there's no reason that that many people need to be going and and taking four year getting four year degrees, or at least the, the way the system's currently playing out. It doesn't make any sense. And just to say, well, what if it just became expected that everybody before entering the workforce would go get a PhD in something, and that that's when you first apply for your first real job as a grown up, you'd have a PhD in some field. Everyone could agree that would be absurd. That'd be crazy. And and to say that doesn't mean, oh, because you know not everyone's smart enough. It just means that'd be a waste of their time. Why would they do that? And that's what I'm saying is true at the college level. And that if you didn't have all the government support and so forth. So what needs to, to change is I think employers have to understand and stop expecting, you know, when someone applies for a job and they don't have, he or she doesn't have an official degree from some four-year institution that that shouldn't be the kiss of death that you know i think and more and more employers are starting to realize that it it's not necessarily a signal that this person you know is undisciplined or must have been a troubled child or something that they might realize well no this it's ridiculous how expensive college is and maybe this person was you know if, if they have 4 years work experience so two candidates who are the same in all respects and one kid spent the last 4 years getting a degree in english and the other kid worked you know as a mechanic somewhere well maybe that kid has a lot more practical skills. So that's, I think, where the, the, the country is going and probably the world as well. I'm not as familiar with other countries, but that's certainly what's happening here. So online education, I think, is great because there's instant feedback. Because that's the problem, too, with education is so you go to school and then for your major, you have all these requirements. And okay, and well, I got to take this course and this course, and then, well, gee, I got to take professor so-and-so at 10 o'clock because that's the only thing that fits my schedule and I need that class even though I can't stand Professor So-and-so, and I've heard he's a horrible teacher. But that doesn't happen with online education, That especially when it's not accredited, where people, you know, I know people are taking my courses at the Mises Academy right now, at least, when we're b because they want to learn, and they think it's worth it to them, and that makes me enthusiastic, because I know they're there to learn, whereas in my courses, if you know, I, I found that I was much more excited to go in and teach to upper-level economics majors who had taken my course when they didn't have to because I knew they were signing up because they liked the way I taught and they knew they were going to learn a lot. And so I'd be excited to show up and have the eight kids in that course, you know, Austrian two or game theory or whatever I was teaching to the economics majors because they didn't have to take that. Whereas if I'd show up for a, a, a principal's course and I knew there were a lot of MBA students in there that had to take me and they were bored out of their minds and they hated it. And I started hating it too because I was almost apologetic. Like, yeah, sorry guys, we got to cover this stuff. And it was just, it was bad. And so that's, you don't get that with online education. Everyone's there because the, the people want to be there and then you can teach what you want. And there's, like I say, that's because of the availability, people can, can shift around. And so the good teachers are going to be able to attract bigger students and that you have the whole world potentially as your customer base. And so you can afford, it makes sense to offer very refined courses on almost obscure topics because there's enough people on planet Earth that might be interested to make it worthwhile to offer that. Yeah. Well, we'll have to have a whole other podcast just on the future of education because it's a really fascinating topic and you've got great ideas about it. And I just want to encourage everybody to uh, sign up for uh, Professor Murphy's upcoming course, um, The Basics of Economics action and exchange uh, you can uh, enroll at academy.mises.org 
And uh, thank you, Bob, so much for talking to us. Thanks for having me, Danny.